So the Economist put out this article a month ago. I couldn't read it because it was behind a paywall. Someone sent it to me and I thanked a special mermaid for sending it to me in my email. It says, why young men and women are drifting apart. Now, we have done other articles because lots of different companies, lots of different articles are talking about this growing rift um, between men and women. All right, so I can already tell some of these names are going to beat my butt. So be aware. I'm just going to call these people by their first name. All right, this one says, in a trendy food market in Warsaw, Poland's capital, two female engineers are discussing how hard it is to meet a nice, enlightened man. Paulina got a big raise, a big pay raise a few years ago. Her boyfriend asked, did you have an affair with your boss? He is now an ex-boyfriend. Um, Paulina's friend, Joanna, recalls a man she met on Tinder who revealed that he was a red pill guy, a reference to the Matrix film, um, the Matrix, a film meaning someone who sees reality clearly. In the Manosphere, a global online community of angry men, it means realizing that men are oppressed. He thought household chores and childcare were women's work and that women could not be leaders. They didn't have a second date. Typically for young Polish women, Paulina and Joanna support parties of the liberal left, which takes women's issues seriously and promise to legalize abortion. Young Polish men, they complain, hew more to the right or even to the far right. Consider last year's election. Then the top choice for 18 to 29 year old men was Confederation, a party that touts free market economics and traditional social values against feminists. And in defense of real women is one of its slogans. Some 26% of men backed it. Only 6% of their female peers did. Young Polish men have their own set of complaints. Feminism has gone too far, say two firemen in their 20s in a small town. Um, Lucas says he used to be able to go to a village dance party and the women there were wife material. Nowadays, they're all posting shameless pictures of themselves on social media, he laments. The media are all biased and pushing the culture to the left, complains Mat Matthews. Neither man would give a surname. People no longer admit that men and women often want to do different kinds of work. I wanted to bring that out because it sounds exactly like what men in America are saying. <laughs> In much of the developed world, the attitudes of young men and young women are polarizing. The economists analyzed polling data from 20 rich company, countries using the European Social Survey, America's General Social Survey, and the Korean Social Survey. Two decades ago, there was little difference between men and women aged 18 to 29 on a self-reported scale of 1 to 10, from very liberal to very conservative. But our analysis found that by 2020, the gap was 0.75. Um, for context, this is roughly the size of the gap in opinion between people with and without a degree the same year. Okay, so as you can see, um, uh, at 2002, this is over here, and then it goes all the way to 2020, men are on top, and they are pretty much very conservative and towards the bottom is more the um, is the darker blue. Those are the women and women are more liberal and the gap is widening. But we we've already seen that we've already seen women um, going more liberal. I see it in the social media discourse. Put another way, in 2020, young men were only slightly more likely to describe themselves as liberal than conservative with the gap just two percentage points. Young women, however, were much more likely to lean left than right with a gap of a massive 27 percentage points. In all large countries we examined, young men were more conservative than young women. In Poland, the gap was 1.1 points on a scale of one to 10. It was a hefty 1.4 in America. In France, it was 0.75. In Italy, it was 0.71. In Britain, it was 0.74. Now I am going to show you a bigger, a different kind of graph, but I'm gonna skip down. For young women, the triumphs of previous generations of feminists and vastly increasing women's opportunities in the workplace and in public life are in the past. They are concerned with continuing injustices from male violence to draconian abortion laws in some countries and the gaps in pay to women shouldering a disproportionate share of housework 
that's something that keeps being brought up, the share of housework and childcare. Plenty of men are broadly in their corner, but a substantial portion are vocally not. Young women's avid liberalism may spring from a feeling that there is much work still to be done and that opposition to doing so will be stiff. Okay, so this is the gap between um, liberal and very liberal between men and women. So the darker blue are the is the female side, the lighter blue is the male side. Look at the United States. The United States has the biggest gap between men and women, and that is crazy how big that gap is. And if you look at the, like, look at Australia, how small the gap is, but there is still a gap. But like you can see, um, the, so if you look to the left, you'll see all the dark blues. And you look to the right, you see how conservative men are. And is when you put it on a chart like this and you can see how big the gap is in comparison to other countries, it, it is just kind of wild. Poland is, it looks like Poland is next after the United States. But you guys can, you know, look at this chart for yourself. The gap does not translate straightforwardly into voting patterns, but it is visible. One poll found that 72% of young American women who voted in House elections in 2022 backed the Democratic candidate. Some 54% of young men did. In 2008, there was barely any gap. Dang, 72% to 54%. That is crazy. In Europe, where many elections offer a wide array of parties, young women are more likely to support the most left-wing ones, whereas young men are more likely to favor the right or even radical right. In France in 2022, young men were much keener than young women on Eric Zemmour, a presidential candidate who wrote a book rebutting Simone de Beauvoir, France's best-known feminist. Germany's election in 2021 saw the largest ever left-right gap between the votes of young women and men, according to Ansar Hude of the University of Cologne. In Portugal, where the far-right Xinga party surged in an election on March 10th, support for its concentrated, vote, concentrated among voters who are young, male, and less educated. And South Korea in 2022 elected an overtly anti-feminist president. More than 58% of men in their 20s voted for him, and some 58% of women in their 20s backed his rival. Young and cranky. The attitude gap between the sexes is also visible in how they view each other. People in 27 European countries were asked whether they agreed that advancing women's and girls' rights has gone too far because it threatens men's and boys' opportunities. Unsurprisingly, men were more likely to concur than women. Notably, though, young men were more anti-feminist than older men, contradicting the popular notion that each generation is more liberal than the previous one. Um, Geff John Off, Nicholas Sharon, and Amy Alexander of Gothenburg University use a Dutch analogy to illustrate the difference between young men, 18 to 29, and old, over 65, um, European men. It is as great on this question as the gap is between the average supporter of Ert Wilder's radical right party for freedom and the liberal Democrats. I don't know these references, but okay. A similar pattern holds in other advanced countries. Although a higher share of young British men think it's harder to be a woman than a man, than think the opposite. 35% to 26%. They are likelier than old British men to say it is harder to be a man than a woman. Young British women are the most likely than their mothers to believe the opposite. Nearly 80% of South Korean men in their 20s say that men are discriminated against. Barely 30% of men over the age of 60 agree, making their views indistinguishable from those of women in their 20s or 60s. The, this top graph where it asked men if um, feminism has gone too far, they're all the way over here, and the women are all the way over here. Feminism is just way, just gone way too far. So they did um, 18 to 29. So the, the younger people are more conservative, and that is crazy. Anyways, so this is a very good article from The Economist. It just shows that men and women are definitely living on two different planets currently. Y'all jump in. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.